I wouldn't want um, to import danger into my household. I wouldn't want to import disease into my household. When you say danger and disease, what, what do you mean? Immigration brings in danger and disease. You think that's down to um, that other people coming in? Well, HIV is it's, it's a combination of factors. It's, it's a homosexual spread HIV predominantly. But the only other way you see people getting it in Great Britain is through migrant populations. I've been spending time with Britain's right-wing extremists. The election of London's Muslim mayor was seen as a progressive step in Britain's diversity, but was met with intense opposition by ultra-nationalists who claimed the nation was under threat from Muslims and immigrants. Since the death of MP Joe Cox by extremist Thomas Mayer, Counterterrorism police have foiled four terror plots. One was a machete attack at a gay pride event. Another was the planned assassination of a left-leaning member of parliament. Jack Renshaw had planned to kill her as part of what he called white jihad. He bought a 19-inch machete and searched the internet to find out how to cut the jugular artery. I was on my way to Milton Keynes to meet Anne-Marie Waters, one of Britain's most anti-Islam and anti-immigrant figures. She viewed Islam as evil and wanted an end to immigration from Muslim countries. I joined her on a campaign she was leading for her political party. She left UKIP after coming second in its leadership race and said she wouldn't oppose membership for English Defence League founder Stephen Lennon, known to many as Tommy Robinson. Uh, there is something happening in London tomorrow, uh, and it's happening at Speaker's Corner. It's journalists from friendly, democratic countries were detained by police in this country and deported. Now, they were deported because one of them wanted to speak to Tommy Robinson. Anne-Marie was referring to alt-right vlogger Brittany Pettibone and her partner, Martin Selner, a leader of the white nationalist movement in Austria. They were denied entry on the grounds their presence would inflame community tensions. Martin Selner's speech was now going to be delivered by Tommy Robinson. There are now prayers being held on a regular basis at Speaker's Corner. We here, the people of Europe, the native people of Europe, our parents and our grandparents and our great-grandparents, to us, this religion is new and it's imported and it's not us, it's not ours. The borders are staying open and that is what it all comes down to, this new globalized world. Look at this truth. This is the truth. These, these, the, Traitors in Westminster need to know that we're watching. A rally on the way to the pub followed, so I caught up with Anne Marie. Let's go. Oh, bloody hell! Let's let people know why we're here. Let's just let people know. Why should I be tolerant when there's no tolerance required from the other side? But they're extremists, they're different. No, 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 no. Massive population in this country is overwhelmingly Pakistani. Now look at Pakistan. Blasphemy carries a death penalty. And not because a tiny minority of extremists want it, but because the vast majority of the country supports it. Surely those same laws don't, wouldn't be imposed here. There are, there are many Muslim countries around the world and they all have different laws. But what do you say to those who say that your, your speech is um, racist? Well. I would say uh, you're a disingenuous liar. Mingling with her supporters and a few drinks later, Anne-Marie joined me. I was hoping to get an insight into her view of Muslim dominance. As I said in my speech, you know, it's being uh, we have now uh, Muslim prayer at Speaker's Corner. What's some wrong with Muslim? Well, People everything praying. is wrong with it. To my mind, it's a show of dominance. Uh, and why, why pick Speaker's Corner? 
uh, because they know that's why where dominance free speech. though well because to, to intimidate uh, and to show uh, that freedom of speech may be your value but it isn't ours I find, I find it difficult to see that. Praying at Speaker's Corner is a symbol. Uh, it's a sign of dominance. And you don't see it, but I do, because I know more about the religion, frankly. I just see praying as a relatively peaceful right. act. Right. <laughs> well, not no, from a violent I, religion, no, it's No, not. no, I, I just want to learn about what, what you're saying, what, why you think that it's, it's a show of dominance. Because it is. Look around the world. You only need to look at the world. You only need to look at the world. How can you coexist? You don't get it. You just don't get it. We are being asked to water down, to rein in freedoms yes. it took our ancestors years to establish. We should not be expected to alter our way of doing things to accommodate them. Sure. Simple as that. But I fail to see where, how this is being done. That, that we in Britain are adapting to Islam and Islamic values. Right. Um, we, I, I explained that we detained journalists for purely for the reasons that they don't like Islam. You won't have Islam unless you have Muslims. It's as simple mm. as that. Do you think a lot of blaming comes on to them unfairly? There's this racial uh, drive. See, it's people like you who make it into a racist drive. It's the media who makes it into racism. No, no, I've no, never no. said anything no, no, about no, race. No, no. Now let me no, finish. No, I'm thinking, but, um, I, British Muslims well, can me, turn let into British Let me give British you Asians. an example. Let me give you That's an example. The uh, rape gangs in this country are almost exclusively Muslim. And it's not, uh, they'll blame it on Pakistanis, but if you go to Bristol, it's actually Somalis. And yet the media insists on calling them Asian. I don't call them Asian. The media calls them Asian. So if anyone is responsible... You call them, for your adamants call them, call them Muslims. Muslims. Yes, yes, they are Muslims. They won't work. You're too different. Um, it, I, I, and, and, and we, the natives of, of Europe and of Britain, are being asked to compromise our values in order to accommodate something that we consider barbaric. Uh, and medieval, and we don't want it. I think it does take some time for immigrants to assimilate. Some and people how many say. How people are we going to sacrifice for them to. You see, here's the point. What's in it for us? What exactly do British gain from opening the, our, war, our doors to half the world and then saying, oh, well, it'll take time for them to integrate? Uh, you know, if, if a thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand girls are raped or mutilated in the meantime, well, that's fine. It'll take time to to, for them to integrate. No, no, Maybe it's not our problem. Sure, it's Henry, not our but job. But you can't to say that's all because of immigrants. It would not have happened if those men had not been allowed into this country. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. The next day, I was on my way to hear a speech by Tommy Robinson. You, you have gone completely independent. Tell people what that means and where people... His show on the far-right Canadian website, The Rebel, so, boosted his following. And after leaving the online years, media, he filmed and shamed British Asians suspected of sex offence while on their way to court. People, I want people to see what I... I was in Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park. There was speculation about Tommy not showing because the speech written by the Austrian nationalist had attracted the attention of authorities. I mean, do we, we haven't actually seen him yet. Do we know for sure he's definitely going to turn up? We don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, who knows? Let's just see what happens. Okay. No to mass immigration! Yes! And no, and no to the Great Replacement! Tommy said the indigenous European population was being replaced. I waited anxiously amongst his fans to talk to him, but he made a quick exit with his entourage, leaving nationalists and Muslims to face off. This cultural Marxism which is affecting us, this anti-white hatred which is affecting us, is now, is now so heavily embedded that our American brothers laugh at us. The ideology of Tommy Robinson, son, is an ideology of fascism and intolerance. Quick, Corey.
Tensions run high after terror attacks, with Muslim communities feeling the after-effect. A month after the concert bombings, Darren Osborne drove into Muslims in London outside Finsbury Park Mosque, killing one person and injuring 12. Metropolitan Police stated in court that his act of terror was influenced by Tom Robinson's online media. Just minutes before, this man was at the wheel of a van, driven at speed into a crowd of unsuspecting worshippers, leaving a mosque after Ramadan prayers. There was a belief that Britain was at war with Muslims and its ethnic minorities, and it led me to my next contact, Paul Pitt, real name Paul Prodromo, an advocate for white pride he gained notoriety at protests for his fiery temper. Paul, yeah. how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, yourself? Good, good, all right. I, well, I, I come from a multicultural family. But don't you think, Paul, that contradicts what you... You know, I mean, sharing a platform, for example, with the National Front, yeah. which you have, yeah. and they're considered to be a, a fascist uh, they're, group, they're, political They're whites movement. only, they're whites only, the National Front. There's not one white movement in the last 40 years since it well longer than that since the second world war you can say since hitler yeah since yeah. hitler yeah. that when a white man stuck his head up i'm genuinely saying it out of a love for white people to say look we should we should be able to take care of ourselves we should look and put ourselves forward the only race on the face of the earth that don't do it is the white people can you project that love for others as well. Yeah, I think yeah I, again, I, I said to you, I don't hate a person because of the colour of their skin. If we're talking about a wider white issue, then it should be channelled purely towards the politicians because they're the ones that sold us out for the last 40 years. Sold the whites out? Yeah, sold everybody out in this country, primarily the whites as well, yeah. Everyone should be proud of their race and who they are, surely. Should we stand over yeah. here out of the wind or yeah, should we yeah. walk in? Uh, I was wondering, how much more do we have to walk to get it's to miles. the miles. You can go miles reserve. and miles. Yeah. <laughs> if you deny people a voice, they have no other choice but to resort to violence. You expect bloodshed. You expect mayhem on the streets. Because at the end of the day, people are fighting for what they believe in. But a lot of people say that the, the, the voice of hatred is, is, is the wrong it's way what, to go about it. Because they're white people? Because they speak? It's no, so because it's hatred. No, it's not hatred. At the end of and the make day, create violence. they was ignored. The man that killed Joanne Cox was ignored and went off on one. Is it right? Well, mm. people will understand why he done it because he was ignored. The same as the guy who drove the van into the Muslims at Finsbury Park. Because of the ideological belief that you carry, do you have to have two different personas? I'm the same person. Everyone knows me. They knew me long before I started all this. Why do you carry the, the name Paul Pitt? <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, it, it, that, does, that doesn't matter, does it? You know what I mean? You, you know in the real coming Stop with for me your safety? To protect my family and that, yeah. But there is that element of danger yeah, of for your is. family that comes from, from what you say. That's why I don't ever have my family on film. That's why mm -hmm. I don't, I wouldn't take you to my house, I wouldn't introduce you to my family. Mm -hmm. Because I can't, I wouldn't ask, ask them to take on what my beliefs, to pay the price for what I believe in. Well, I'd like to see the Muslims in this country, all normal Joe Muslim walking around, yeah? yeah? Take responsibility for your religion. Take responsibility for the men that are fucking killing innocent people in the name of your religion. No matter how much ordinary Muslims uh, integrate themselves and adapt to the culture and principles and, and values of Britain, mm. you still see Islam as evil, won't you? Myself? Won't you? Yeah, because I do feel Islam is evil. But I just wonder that instead of going along with the rhetoric that you have, yeah. that can potentially fuel what and provoke We say, oh, provoke us. And I embrace think, everyone because no. not every Muslim is a terrorist. What about the peaceful resolution, you know, just... Really? You do believe that there's going to be a peaceful resolution to this? There is no peaceful solution and I don't think there ever will be. 
Do you think like things are likely in that case to escalate? Some have said things like civil war happening and... I could see that happening. I could see it happening the really? same as what happened in Northern Ireland. By the way, what do you think about that? I think it's terrible. It broke my fucking heart. I will fucking cry. Mm -hmm. I will cry to see my country destroyed in that way and us having no other choice. But I do believe it's going to happen. I felt disappointed I couldn't encourage Paul's outlook towards a more tolerant approach. Earlier this year, numerous letters had been posted and circulated online inviting people to punish a Muslim day, rewarding points for the level of violence used in attacks. Tech companies were closing accounts of radical right-wing figures for reinforcing such messages of hate. Nationalists were calling it a clampdown on their freedom of speech. I headed to the coastal town of Lowestoft in Suffolk to meet the former social media administrator of the EDL. His name is Ivan Humble and he used to be the regional organiser for the East Anglian Division and had now become a campaigner for tolerance. After I left, I realised the consequences of my actions with my, with my children and especially my, my oldest daughter. The two kids at home, they were being neglected. Not, I weren't hurt about enough of them, but they were going without my time. I think back then, I had a, quite a ruthless heart. My heart was covered, if you, if you understand what I mean. Ivan's tattoos signified the loyalty he once had to his EDL division. Yeah, I had no one no. It kind of, most tattoos have a meaning. This is probably the only tattoo that has This is we have meaning. far more in common than which divides us. Yes. Um, Joe Cox is saying that I've realised that I suppose the passion for what I do now is, is realising that we've got common ground with people we think we we hate or we disagree with and by not attacking the differences no more and working on the common ground the division seems less. When you're in that mindset you only see your point of view. There's a fine line between free, freedom of speech and hate speech. Their argument is that if their opinions are closed down and they're not able to express themselves on social media, then they're being censored. And you'll always have an argument. That argument will always be there because somebody always think they're being. Because they're silenced. saying it's not hate speech. It's it's them just. It's because freely they're expressing it's because they obviously believe in their head. That's a genuine concern, but they're not seeing their own sugar-coated agenda around it. I'm going to be meeting with the youth member of the NBU. Oh, yeah? Their leader's Gary Rakes. Gary Rakes, yeah. Yeah, see, I've kind of known Gary for a long time as well. He was around when I was in the EDL. I remember him seeing him then. They've got um, quite mad ideas, they have, haven't they? They're, they're probably fascist. They're just like Mosley was years ago. Ivan told me that Gary Rakes was seeking followers at the anti-Muslim street movement named the Football Lads Alliance. The NBU had its roots in the anti-Jewish political party of the 1930s, called British Union of Fascists, led by Oswald Mosley, notorious for campaigning for Britain to make peace with Hitler. Their party was outlawed by the government after the start of the Second World War. I left for Leeds to see the group's leading youth member, Jack Williams, who asked for his face not to be shown he was a second-year university student with a personal admiration for the fascist dictator Benito Mussolini. Under our system, the government would have almost no power. It's important that I distinguish this movement from you know, some of the lunacy that is preached by people who claim the same title as us. The basis uh, tenets of our ideology are, uh, stem from fascism. To lighten the mood, I suggested a game of pool. How would the fascist party work within the political system of Britain today? Do you um, approach the British government and say that we need to overthrow this system? Certainly I'm not calling for anything illegal, you know, not some kind of physical armed revolution. So it's not revolution, it's a reform? 
Well, what no, it think? is revolution. The necessity for a revolution is, it cannot be understood. It's, it, it, it is a necessity. You know, there are so many ills with British society that simply tweaking bits here and there will not cut it. It will not make people happy. If we want to deliver people unto happiness, we absolutely have to rethink the whole system. For those who just want a basic understanding of what the NBU is about. Our principal goal, bringing the nation together. Can you leave the Nazi salute out? Uh, well, I because of the historical connotation? You know, I, I can't speak for any other people in that regard, but I personally don't choose to use it for that exact reason that you've just given. Um, the, the leader of the NBU has, has... Sure, he doesn't do it in re uh, uh, reverence of Adolf Hitler. He does it because it was a movement, it was the salute of all fascist movements. As abhorrent as his views were, Jack wasn't a die-hard neo-Nazi fascist, but it looked like he was on a path to becoming one. You're the leader of the youth. Well, actually, recently I was uh, promoted, if you will. Um, over the last couple of days, I'm now uh, head of the propaganda department. And how does that fit in with your university schedule, um, it being a student? Half my time is dedicated to my academic pursuits, and then the other half is dedicated to the moral tenets that I feel to be justified. Would I be right in saying your family knows? M my family have some idea, but not... Um, it's just, it's more convenient not to tell people, and it's unfortunate. It's a, an inevitable consequence of, of not listening to what we have to say. It's going to fuel extremism from this ideology. And the people are going to get resentful, and they're going to turn to extremist politics. So I think what, what you're saying is that it justifies far-right extremism. It doesn't justify. I'm not talking about from a moral uh, perspective. I'm talking about just... It is a necessary consequence. We have white rhinos and black rhinos in nature, but if the white rhinos are going extinct, you know, we, we seek to preserve that. It's, it, it's a perfectly natural thing. We want to preserve the uh, beautiful diversity of human development. And if, if there's a mathematical reason that's to not, suspect... That's not what's happening here. The white uh, population is a uh, majority, is a vast majority. certainly is, but it's also um, the fastest declining population in Britain. And... We, uh, um, we can't let the, the white British people become a minority. How do you feel about being called propaganda officer? Um, it's an accurate description of my, um, my role. But propaganda to me um, means that you're projecting a biased view. Uh, Isn't that what it... Well, means in general. I'm biased towards my own political ideology, just as the conservatives are biased towards conservative. It's a genuine belief. I don't believe there are. There That's is something I don't. I don't believe that the conservatives are biased just to their own view. They will. They will look at other viewpoints as well. Do you generally believe that the people would you would gain support from the people uh, about racism about? Genocide, getting rid of other cultures, other people with, uh, with, with, with other beliefs like um, Jews uh, in World War II. Can you see how that would be scary for... Yeah, I, I, I do. We are only being honest um, in, in what we believe. You said before that Hitler was a bad apple, uh, but Oswald mostly wanted to be an ally with him. Not an ally, he just didn't want war. There's a difference. Like, allying with someone. So wasn't he fond of him? Uh, and I wouldn't say it was something that was um, a, a fondness that Mosley didn't have heaps more for, for Mussolini and, and Rivera and so on. I sensed Jack was uncomfortable admitting to the atrocious principles of the NBU and struggled to repackage the group's image to the current times from its 1930s pro-Nazi views. His views had led him to an isolated world, causing him to keep a part of his life hidden from his family and friends. I couldn't help feeling sorry for Jack, wondering if he was being groomed by his seniors in the NBU. I arrived in Birmingham, home to one of the largest Muslim populations in Britain. The Football Lads Alliance were rallying at the heart of the city against what they called Islamist extremism. There were rumours NBU leader Gary Rakes would be here. Unable to spot him, I came across a white nationalist identitarian leafleting. 
he didn't want to talk to me, so instead I looked for Anne-Marie Waters, invited to speak at the rally. Hello Anne-Marie, how are you doing? You're the bold about people, and the brilliant bold you've got, darling, the brilliant bold you've got. Thank you, you're, you're seen as a bit of a celebrity here. <laughs> oh, only, only here. It's all a bit overwhelming, really, but try not to think about it too much. Just think about the job I have to do. I don't know if Antifa are going to be here today, but March Against Racism is going to be here. What, what do you think about them? Well, they didn't. What is, what's, why is a march against racism opposing us? This has got nothing to do with racism. I wasn't convinced Anne-Marie was oblivious to the belief that she was racializing a religious community. It's absolutely insane that the, the media is so focused on people like me. Her like-minded colleague Tommy Robinson also made a presence. How are you, baby? Uh, you right? Tom, I've been better. Do you think he likes the spotlight a bit? Hey, <laughs> Tommy. Oh, that's right. I'm, I'm Aaron. Would we'll it be okay to have a chat later? Yeah, yeah, about, cool. about the event and everything. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. Right. Amari, Amari. While Tommy agreed to talk to me, I lost him amongst the crowd and heard he and UKIP leader Gerard Batten had joined the FLA splinter group, named the Democratic FLA. We're living in a very dark time in this country's history, a really dark time. We live in a country where the police spend more time on Twitter than they do on jihadis. We have to bring down the European Union and we will bring it down. Fuck the EU! There's another one, another big issue. And that, of course, is Islam. You will offend moderate Muslims with your language. Well, I'm sorry, but millions of decent British people are offended by this religion and the poison it's bringing into our country. The street movement and its eventual successor, the DFLA, were being called the New English Defence League. And again, Tommy Robinson was the leading figure for its protesters. Known to accommodate football hooligans in high numbers, this is Britain's biggest anti-Muslim and anti-immigrant mobilisation. I imagine Anne Marie saw them as potential voters for her political party. You have our official support. And, and like her, so did UKIP leader Gerard Batten, who also allowed party membership to Tommy Robinson. Britain's EU exit deal had contributed to anti-establishment sentiment in national populists, and the internet was their haven for getting politically organised. A sophisticated network unified ultra-nationalists across Europe and the US, catering the message of preserving the indigenous white culture. I was going to meet one of its prominent architects, a former UKIP parliamentary candidate in Liverpool. How are you doing, Jack? How's it going? Right, good, good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you. How are you doing? How do you do? He's allegedly the spin doctor for Irexit, Ireland's exit from Europe, and his name is Jack Sen. So, back from obviously Ireland. Ireland, yeah. Yes, how was it? It was good. It was yeah? Good trip. Good. Yeah. Right. All work. We're working with an uh, Irish nationals organisation that's looking to push for Irexit, which is the equivalent of Brexit. So. Right. So. And how's that coming along? Well, um, the websites, I basically built the website. Okay. I still live here, like legally. Yes. But uh, because of the problems we had, we felt it was just easier to stay there. Because of the nature of this sort of politics. The idea of pressing legislation where you would um, social services get involved with children for nationalists, uh, mm -hmm. but we have children, obviously. Okay. They're going to pass a new law where extremists can lose their children. It was actually for um, Islamic extremists, but they've kind of extended it to also mean anywhere they deem to be extreme. And then the, the, the London Met leader actually said far right extremists. Jack had concerns about authorities knowing where he is, and it looked like it was because of his beliefs.
I think Islamic people are culturally inassimilable. I don't believe that there's any place for mosques in Great Britain. Personally, I don't believe there is. I believe that there, I mean... How there many mosques do you think so there should be in Britain? How many should there be? Zero. Zero. 100% zero. Uh, there shouldn't be one mosque in Great Britain. Um, I would see that as complete religious in intolerance. It's a Christian country at this point. It's Chris part of Christendom. Europe, the natives have a right to fight back. I, I, I don't want to uh, really harp on Muslims. I think that all forms of immigration are poisonous or toxic. There's a type of nationalism which is obsessed with Islam. People like Tommy Robinson and you know some of these um, counter-jihad movements which are obsessed with Islam. Everything else is fine. You know, blacks from Nigeria, as long as they're Christian, fine. You know, it's fine to push homosexuality in schools. Cultural Marxism is fine. Anne Marie Waters, everything is fine. It's just Muslims. Well, I ask, uh, is a, a black Nigerian who is more has a higher propensity to commit crime than a Pakistani does actually, better an immigrant than a Pakistani? I would argue no. I would argue that both, um, it's like choosing a form of cancer you want to be afflicted by. I don't think you'd want to choose one form of cancer over another. You'd, you wouldn't want cancer. When the nation is too homogenous, when it's too nationalistic, uh, the Jews are typically the first group that's pushed out, as we've seen across Europe. I think Jewish ethnocentrism is fine in their country, but I don't think it works in my country. I think it harms. What do you mean their country? Well, Israel is their country now. But Jewish people regard themselves as British. Well, why, are they, why, are they, why are they acting, or not, or why are they not acting in the best interest of the host nations? Whatever country they may be, they regard themselves as loyal and uh, they don't. To, to that I disagree. culture. I disagree with you. I disagree with you 100%. You they don't intermarry. Mm -hmm. Jews don't intermarry. But you, you can't say that's representative of all Jews. Of course not. I'd say as a strategy. It's a strategy. I mean, I'm an ethnic nationalist. I believe Britain should remain English. Uh, and th but there are places of people who are not fully English. I'm not fully English. Genuinely... Under like your political principle, yeah. you, would, you wouldn't be considered English then? I would consider because myself three quarters. Because you're not fully English. No. I do regard myself as English and British. But you're British, but you're not English. I'm not fully English. Why? Why am I Because I'm not in... Okay, I lived in America at one point. Was I Native American? Why was I not Native American? Because I'm not indigenous to North America. But if you live in the culture of the Native Americans and adopt but their English culture, is not a culture. English and is values. A, English is a race. It's a ident racial identity. It's an ethnic identity. I yeah. just feel like there's so many more important things that, that, that we need to no. um, project in, 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 in our culture and our nation. I don't think so. For people um, to have coexistence and, and, and tolerance and equality, to, to be too focused on ethnic identity. In the work that you do yeah. in Resistance Radio, yeah. you have a relatively close relationship with the alt-right in the States. I do. I, I write a, not as much as I used to, but I used to write for the Occidental Observer, and I still do, uh, which is run by Dr. Kevin McDonald, uh, who's probably the, I like to see as the grandfather of the, the alt-right. My director of communications for Resistance Radio and for British Renaissance actually is the director of communications for altright.com, which is Richard Spencer's. Um, organization. And I'm actually in communication with, with Richard right now to set up a European conference, actually. Free speech event in Europe where Richard would be the headline speaker. Um, and I would be the kind of the organizer and I would speak as well, of course. So. The word racist is a fake word. It's a way of trying to shut Do down speech. Do you feel that speech. white people are superior? Do you think that you are better than I am? There's no ultimate object. Are you better than I, mean, I wouldn't want um, to import danger into my household. I wouldn't want to import disease into my household. When you say danger and disease, what, what do you mean? Immigration brings in danger and disease. You think that's down to um, that other people coming in? Well, HIV is it's, it's a combination of factors. It's, it's a homosexual spread HIV, predominantly. But the only other way you see people getting it in Great Britain is through migrant populations. You want to get a drink or something of water? I mean, oh, that'll be nice. Earl Grey? Drink yeah, I'll have a sip or two, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, where were we? Um, the problems we faced, maybe? Well... i wait for that. After that? Yeah. <laughs> the allegations that have been made against us have been unbelievable. I mean, I don't know if I want to say it's on camera, but like, you know, um, you know, false allegations, obviously. And they've been, you know, ultimately, when social services comes out, they say, oh, there's no charge to answer for. But that's after, you know, five phone calls, two interviews, and, you know, us thinking, you know, they come and take the baby away because of the politics, you know. Do you have to move around a lot because yeah. of this and we live a 
uh, double life. It's just maybe slightly mm -hmm. paranoid, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, but I guess it's not really paranoia when it's uh, backed by yeah, <laughs> the fact that there's you know, the threats. Uh, so, sure. Yeah. Do you have a um, bit of milk I could just um, put in there? I see. probably do. It was upsetting seeing the burden Jack had brought upon his family, but he enjoyed being seen as a prominent nationalist figure. I had been helping recently the leading group in the Irexit movement, so basically Brexit but in Ireland, possibly create a free speech event with them as well. Is it accurate to say that you're working with a number of medias that are pushing forward the pan-European uh, movement, pan-European identity movement. Sure, certainly, certainly, yeah, definitely. Three, four million people a week we're reaching, so it's uh, it's massive, you know. Okay, so we're on my tablet. This is my Facebook page. Jack boasted about his inner workings and influence online. My guest Sound today is, breaking is up okay. Jack Sen. He's a former parliamentary candidate. Right now, we're going to talk about Jewish involvement in the destruction of South African white genocide. Should go for a walk. We go for a walk and show you yeah. the area around here outside and see what it's like in a ni nice, peace peaceful, leafy area. I bought my car from a footballer. Oh, right. Yeah, the black one. I bought okay. it from a, from a footballer. Yeah. Okay. I know him and he sold me for cheap, so. Did he know about your uh, political views? Uh, yes and no. We go here. We walk up here. Uh, in, the, the, on the, in the center, we go on the grass. No, we did not. <laughs> no, we did not. So that wouldn't go down well with um, with buying the car off him. I don't know. He, he didn't seem to care. Yeah. I don't think he really cares. So. It's a nice, nice area. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. And you know, wouldn't want to see this change, and that's what I would worry about. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, my mother's side of the family is from this area for as many generations as I can remember. Before that, from Ireland, actually. Um, but you I mean. My fear is that immigration would just destroy this place. Do you think uh, Trump has allowed for people like you to you to be more freely expressed? As well? I would say he has given us a voice. I think people like me who weren't vocal feel like they can be vocal more because Trump is honest. He's expressed what 90% of the population thinks, that we don't want people coming from shitholes. Why do we want people, look, when they come here, they don't. I think, I think, I think Americans, actually a lot of Americans would be offended by you saying that 90% of them would think that. Well, I'm not, well, maybe I'm not saying Americans, but I'd say probably Westerners in general. Back home, I learned Jack's sister had opposing views. Liberals typically travel to wonderful Western European nations. Like my sister, for example. She is a left-wing liberal California person. But she travels when she goes on holiday, Ireland, Italy, France and she goes to castles and museums and she just revels in the art and the culture. But yet when I said to her, well, why do you want to see all the immigrants coming in and changing everything, that the culture you love, the languages you love, were created by these people, why do you want to see them replaced? She has no answer for that. I think well, preserving the culture is different to preserving the people. Do you think that a, a black majority will preserve a, a, the Italian culture? If the black, black... Of course, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Didn't Barack Obama preserve the American culture? Absolutely not. Barack Obama was a disaster for the United States. I think Trump opened the door for all of us, really. And I think that's wonderful. You know, Donald Trump will, will go down in history for me as a, probably the most important historical figure you know, in the, tw the 21st century. Because of him, you know, people like me feel as though you know, we have a chance too. I don't think Trump is racist in any way, shape, or form. Zero. I think he's a civic nationalist. He's America first. I don't think he's racist. And it's not racism to say Haiti is a shithole. Haiti is a shithole. It's not racism to say it's for shithole. And if all the countries that are shitholes happen to be black, then perhaps the black people who live in those countries should start asking some questions about why we live in shitholes. But Haiti is a shithole. I don't know if you can use that language. It is a bit insensitive, though, saying that, isn't it? No, it's true. So let's be clear. A white honky from Norway can come here, but a black dude from Haiti can't. What does that tell you in an America that, one, that, that in one generation called you a nigger? I know him well, and I like him and admire him, but this is a new low. The, the language, the racial implications are reprehensible, and he deserves the criticism he's going to get. Jack drew strength from President Trump's words, and he wasn't the only one. In a video message to Donald Trump, Anne-Marie Waters said her political party is inspired by Trump's conviction to fearlessly defend his country. I drove back south to Essex to see Anne-Marie at her home. 
hoping to see a different side to her than the provocative one I had seen so far. I wanted to press her on the consequences her message had on her supporters. Sweetie. She's not comfortable with us. Oh, our, she's not. With, with seeing us here. Can you guarantee that what goes on in um, your social media doesn't affect others or influence others to carry out violent crime and extremism? How can I guarantee that? I'm not responsible for what other people do. What always amazes me about this is that apparently people like me are responsible for right wing uh, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, but the Quran is not responsible for jihadis who tell us they're following the Quran. What you're presenting is very selective. No, I'm and telling you. It's targeted like, at Islam. No, 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 no. Like what? I tell the truth about what Islam teaches. It's like, for example, FGM. Everyone insists across the board that FGM has nothing to do with Islam. I'm saying that is absolutely not true. Just because not all Muslims do it doesn't mean it has nothing to do with Islam. It was my understanding that something like female genital mutilation is a cultural mm. issue. Um, I've just explained. Th that it comes that it's, from West it's, Africa. It's, it's, uh, well, Indonesia is not in West and, and Africa. Uh, it, it is but Christians in West Africa also do it. It is do growing. This. I'm fully aware that there are a tiny number of Christians who do it. That's my understanding, it's not written anywhere in the Quran. It's promoted by Muslim clerics as a Muslim obligation. Take it up with them if that's not true. Why is it our job? Why does all this migration have to come here in the first place? Don't you see that as being a little bit dangerous because you're um, presenting this connection of mass immigration and, and Muslims being a basically damaging? They our are society. damaging our society. The cultural practices they're bringing is damaging our society. Sweetie. She's so bewildered. No idea what's <laughs> going on, do you, sweetheart? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. She's like, oh, where do, when are these people going to go so I can just be in my comfort zone again? <laughs> and just do what I want. Treat? About the case of Darren Osborne driving down uh, a number of Muslims outside of mosque and Thomas Mayer killing her. Uh, British MP. They're both murderers and should serve whole life terms. Would you classify them as extremists? Well, of course. As, as far right extremists? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know them. I don't know who they are. All I know is what I read in the mainstream media, uh, which is usually lies. Would you agree that Tommy really Robinson influenced his uh, motivations? I, it, it's absolutely astonishing to me. Tommy Robinson did not, unless Tommy Robinson knocked on his door and sat him down and said, listen, you need to go out and do this. All Tommy Robinson is doing is speaking. For an immigrant to come to Britain, what British values would you like to see well, them uphold? They're going to have to accept that you're going to be offended uh, if we offend your religion, we have every right, we have a history of sat satirising, of mocking, uh, and we will do so, we will continue to do so. The greatness of a country is how they treat their minorities. How is, what are you suggesting? That we all shut up in case a minority is offended? Get the message. It doesn't no, matter but, but, if people are offended. But what I'm saying is, is, is not to cause hatred and... and Absolutely. Be overly offensive. It doesn't That's get through, just what it? I'm saying. If you don't like it, don't live here. Before leaving, we took the dogs for a walk. Anne Marie's firm conviction made it difficult to build a rapport, and her incessant beliefs raised questions I wanted to put to her about the British government. What if I throw the ball? They're not likely to oh, catch it. Probably not. No, <laughs> I'll give it. A, I'll give it a go. Oh yes. There you go. Yeah, she's getting involved now. Do you think the um, government is listening in on what you say and um, <laughs> oh, observing I don't know. you? I don't know. Uh, I don't know how much, you know, some people think that we're being watched all the time and other people think that there's nothing that happened. And I think the truth is probably somewhere in between. Um, I certainly wouldn't like to think I'm being watched, I don't think Do you I think am. they consider you as a threat? Uh, probably not yet. I mean, they probably do in the, in the way that, you know, the kind of stuff you talk about, storing up this and that. Uh, but as a political threat, no, but they will one day. I was
was close to the end of my time with the far right, and I had no luck in talking to one of its most prominent figures, Tommy Robinson, but I managed to secure a meeting with one of his relatives. Tommy, meanwhile, took to the headlines prosecuted for contempt of court for a second time. His supporters didn't see it this way and called him a martyr of free speech. I was in Tommy's hometown of Luton to meet his uncle, Darren Carroll. Let's go, I'll follow yep. you. Alright, yeah. pull this way. Well, if we've got umbrellas, you don't mind, this would be quicker, but yeah. a little bit wetter. Yeah, okay. I can see the resemblance with uh, Tommy Robinson. Oh, okay. I've got nephews that people think I'm the brother of. I was reading about you uh, towards the end of being the EDL, and you yourself were a founder with Tommy Robinson. You told Tommy that you know, it's not the right way to go, uh, it's not the right path to go down. Um, so you kind of warned him as well before you left. I don't talk about family or individuals. I mean, I, I, I don't think it put me in a good light if I stood here and, and, and said anything about detrimental about family. I just want to understand your feelings just on this aspect of, is it something that you are up, upset about, that Tom Robinson is continuing down this route? I've had too much negativity in my life to, to um, even really uh, I'm just not going back there. You know, I, I'm starting dialogue with other communities and I'm just trying to, you know, be here and do something positive here today with you guys. You know, that's what I do. So any, any individuals can just speak for themselves. Once a close relationship leading the EDL to